Welcome to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. I'm Jody Walls. I'm Brady Brock. We're with Gumtree Mortgage here in New Albany over on Starlin Avenue. We specialize in home financing needs, whether it's a purchase, a refinance, or a new construction. And we're super passionate about trying to help you find the home of your dreams, help you get it financed, just like this one right here. Go dogs. Go dogs. This week's Tallahassee Nutrition Player of the Week is Caleb Shumpert. Caleb had a tremendous job Friday against Northeast Lauderdale. He had 147 yards on only three receptions, two touchdowns, right? One touchdown. You get caught? Uh, yeah. Get caught on one on my bad. <laughs> one touchdown, but a huge night on those three receptions. So congratulations on being Player of the Week, Tallahassee Nutrition Player of the Week. Mr. Horn? Yes, sir. And congratulations again. And with that comes, you get a tee from, from Tallahatchie Nutrition, and you get invited to our end-of-the-year banquet where all the Players of the Week come and get a steak dinner. You gonna be able to handle the steak? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also, Sean, hopefully this success right here is gonna lead into this next Friday against Louisville. Got to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Got to be able to play well next week too. But congratulations on this past week. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. I'd like to welcome you today to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. I'm Paul Henry with David Goode. The show is brought to us by Gumtree Mortgage, Brady Brock, Jody Walls. Those guys do a tremendous job for us. Also, Pam Brown at State Farm. Uh, both businesses have supported the Coach Show all year. Do a tremendous uh, job for us, and just uh, we greatly appreciate it. Well, Coach, huge win Friday night, first round of playoffs, right? Yeah, you know, anytime uh, you win a home playoff game, it's exciting. I think it's the second time in six years we've gotten to host a playoff game and won it. Um, you know, so extremely excited about that Northeast Lauderdale team. It came, came in a team that's got some athletes on it. The quarterback is a tremendous athlete, um, running back for all year. Had really good stats for them. Um, so it was a good test for us. Good, good kind of. Um, getting us started in that postseason and that third part of the season. And so I'm glad the way we responded, glad the way the players uh, got after it and you know, came away with a win. Well, I feel like, you know, in the trenches on both sides of the ball, we just dominated Friday night. Yeah, I think every game that starts and stops up there, you know, you got to do well up there. I think from an offensive line standpoint, we're getting better and better. You know, the big thing there, regardless of your technique, regardless of what you're doing, you got to move people. So that's key. And then on the defensive side, you got to control the line of scrimmage. you got to dis be disruptive. Um, and we've done that really well, especially the last latter part of the season. I think inserting a fourth D lineman has been big for us. Coach Collin mm -hmm. Stubblefield has done a good job. He's got several guys he can count on every Friday night. Uh, JT Newby, a junior. Conley, a senior. Hernandez, a sophomore. Morton, a sophomore. Kathy, a senior. Horn, a junior. And Gilbert, a senior or a junior as well. Yeah, I think we're led by those couple seniors you talked right. about, you know, uh, Ethan Kathy and Ethan Conley. Um, but when you go past them, there's a lot of guys. You know, there's a lot of depth that, that we're excited about. At right tackle, Ethan Conley has, for the most part, held it out all year. But you've seen Emmanuel Tucker come in and play at right tackle. At guard, Sam Morton has been the dominant guy there. Um, at center, Ethan Conley has been there. You've also seen Horn come in and play that. He's a he's kind of a backup snapper. At left guard, we've had a battle all year, basically the whole left side. At left guard, we've had Horn and Michael Hernandez. You know, Horn started the game, for the most part, up into the last couple games. Michael's a little bit bigger body, a little more strength there. Um, has, has given us a little bit more push there. Both those guys will keep playing there. And then at left tackle, it's all year. You've seen JT Newby and, and Isaac Gilbert. So um, the fact that we've got multiple play, got players in there, um, guys gaining experience, you know, just the options, uh, and that competition, you know, always breeds success. So we're excited about that. Uh, Braden had a good <clears throat> night as well. Seven of 10, 256 yards, two touchdowns, and another interception. Yeah, for the, for the, but it's only his fourth of the year. Yeah, so. you know, like Eric said, threw a pick. Uh, you know, that, don't ever like that, but mm -hmm. four all year, you know, that's a tremendous stat right there in and of itself. Uh, seven completions for 250 yards. That totally shows you right there that a lot of big plays. Caleb Schumper had a great night. Um, but Braden continues to play really well. We had some issues early, you know, taking care of the ball. You know, we gave him a, an opportunity to kind of to jump up on us early. Um, but, you know, from that point on, we, you know, we really, really did a good job making decisions um, and move the football effectively and, you know, dominated defensively. I look back at last year's stats from uh, Braden and uh, kind of good comparison for, for him for this year. Uh, for this year on the season, he's 115 uh, completions, 174 attempts for 2,118 yards, 
24 touchdowns and, and uh, four interceptions. Last year, uh, through nine games, he was 125 completions for 208 uh, attempts, uh, 1,864 yards, 11 TDs, and six interceptions. So increase in your touchdowns and decrease in your interceptions. So Yeah, and you know, we think those numbers are only going to keep going up for Brady. You know, playing right now as a sophomore, um, just the biggest part of his game, I think he's extremely accurate with the football, and he's a good decision maker, you know. Um, he extends plays also with his legs really well. So I'm uh, tremendous, uh, tremendously proud of the way he's playing right now. I'm excited about how he'll continue to progress. You know, his touchdown interception ratio this year is incredible. Um, <clears throat> and, in, you know, uh, we it, calling the game, you know, whether we, we got all the confidence in the world in Braden, we also got a lot of confidence in that running back back there. So mm-hmm. kind of picking your poison, I think the team that is the most effective is that team that is able to create balance. Um, and we're able to do that right now, and Braden is a huge part of that. Uh, you know, we look for him to only improve and excited about the way he's playing. Anytime you're over 2,000 yards passing, that's a big stat as well. Yeah, Simpson, you mentioned him, uh, 150 carries on the year for 1,084 yards, 15 touchdowns. <clears throat> Last year, 87 carries, 533 yards, and 10 touchdowns. So. An increase there, almost double for, for him this yeah, year. Yeah, you know, and last year he was splitting reps a lot right. with uh, Cody Atkinson, but he, he's done a tremendous job for us. You know, anytime you're over 2,000 yards passing, over 1,000 yards rushing, those are those are great stats, great years. Uh, you know, we we hope to add to the, both of those because, you know, we tell them every every day that this week, you know, we got four more games left. So, um, you know, look for those stats to go up. Look for those guys to keep playing well. Um, you know, we, we tell them all the time, you know, it's not – about individual stats, although we all like those, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to do whatever we got to do for the team to be successful. Well, I feel like the one of the great things about our team this year is just, like you said, balance. You know, we're, you know, if they load up in a box, we can throw it over the top. If 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 they back off, you know, we're going to take the underneath route, or then we've got a big back that can pound it there. You know. Yeah, I think you know, going into Friday night's game against Northeast Lauderdale, we thought we were better up front. You know, when we showed that Friday night. So offensively, we wanted to be able to establish the run game, run the football, pound the ball a little bit, give Keelan a little bit more of a of a roll right there, and just let him do his thing. But also, when they sucked in and when they they tried to stop that running game, that left matchups outside that we liked, you know. So we would play action, hit Caleb Shumpert over the top, had a couple of big plays, you know, that led uh, to his I think 100 close to 140 something yards receiving. So um, you know. When you, when you try to take one thing away, you're probably opening the door to something else. So that's what we try to do offensively. Yeah, Caleb had uh, three catches for 147 yards and two touchdowns on the year. 24 catches, 508 yards and seven touchdowns. Yeah, you know he's having a good year. Um, really, as of late, just kind of taking over. We need him to continue to to dominate out there. You know, whether if it's a jump ball or if it's a post route or whatever that is, if he needs to either run by him. Or go up and attack the ball and make a play, and so he's been doing that for us. And you know that's what we're talking about. We he's good enough that we need to take some 50-50 balls. You know we need to just if they get down in their face, throw the ball up to him, see what he can do. Um, if they you know if they're if the safety's playing aggressively, run a post over the top. So there are things he can do that can really stress a defense. He did a great job. Uh, almost identical play uh, the week before the Ripley game. He had an 80-yard touchdown mm-hmm. pass this past week. So right. awesome. he, he's certainly our home run threat, you know, over the top, um, you know, and and so he he runs really well. I mean, he gets those long legs going. Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you what he runs exactly right now, but uh, but he's moving the ball well and runs probably plays faster on that field than he does just running a sprint though. But he lo- he looks really good. Yeah, Shaw also caught a screen pass and took it for a 70-yard touchdown um, as well. So. Yeah, and, and that looked like Shaw, right? You know, right, we we right. he he did a lot of that early. Kind of went through a little bit of a lull middle part of the season, and we've been wanting to get Shaw more and more involved. And you know, he's just one of the guys that we've got to give him the ball. You know, him and DJ Robinson, those guys got to get touches because they can be explosive, and make big things happen. Um, but that was, you know, defining Shaw and the way he plays the game. That was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, caught a short pass, did a great job setting those blocks up the offensive line, did a tremendous job of getting down the field, uh, and he went the distance. So um, just a really good play. Uh, he is very good in space with football. Bulldogs averaging 36 points per game, so I know you're happy with that. Yeah, you know, what we go into each week, you know, um, just general staff. We, we want to be under 17 points defensively. We want to be over 28. Uh, so the fact that we're averaging 36, and I think we're giving up somewhere around that 16, 12 to 16, somewhere in there. So we're we're winning both sides of that, you know. So really excited about the way uh, you know offense is playing, defense is playing, special teams continue to do well. So well, I think we're we're playing our best football right now, and this is the time you want to do that.
Yeah, uh, you're right on it. Uh, 15.9 points per game, what yeah. your defense is giving up. So uh, 16 points is awesome. And, and you know, playing a tough schedule too. You know, it's guys that are putting up a lot of points to some of the opponents we play. Uh, you know, Coach Murphy, uh, the, the other defensive coach has done a tremendous job this year. Um, I think, you know, just we've been really, really good tackling as of late and not giving second chances. I think Senatopia, who credit them, they're a really good football team. Uh, too many missed tackles, too many second chances with a quarterback and running back. Um, but since then, we've really locked it down, really done a really good job defensively. And uh, I think that's, uh, you know, five games in a row that they're playing really solid. I think one thing, you know, all the injuries early kind of threw a lot of kids into the fire, per se, playing white. Yeah. And now they've kind, of, they've, they've kind of got in the groove here. Yeah, well, you know, experience and reps, you know, it does a lot for somebody. But also the Senatobia game, you know, uh, Parker, um, Parker went down. Our inside linebacker who had reps went down through uh, somewhere in the first quarter and didn't play without him. So we were down to our, you know, our third, fourth, and fifth options at inside linebacker. And those guys did a good job. They just either have, don't have the experience or the reps that Skinner has at there. So having those guys back, having them healthy is a, is a big thing. Skinner with eight tackles this past week against Northeast Lauderdale. I've got him with 46 on the year. Uh, Bowling nine tackles against Northeast Lauderdale and got him with 65 on the year. Well, Jeb's done a tremendous job. I mean, he, he's coming downhill. Uh, he, he's not trying to just get in there and wrap a guy up. He, he's bringing his shoulder pads with him. He, he's hitting people, and I think we're doing that all over the defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Parker Skinner is doing a tremendous job. Like I said, lost him in that San Antonio game. That was a big loss for us. Um, he just, he, he's got experience, played a lot as a ninth grader. Now as a sophomore, he's played a lot and he's got experience. But just a, a gritty, tough kid that does what he's supposed to do uh, and is a sure tackler when he gets there. Higgs with six tackles and two tackles for loss. Uh, got him with 54 on the year. Uh, Cortland Earl, seven tackles and a tackle for a loss as well. Uh, and Cameron, uh, McCollin Cameron, five tackles with three tackles for losses on, on the down. Uh, you know, and stats don't lie. You know, those are some of the right. some of the better players on our defense. Um, Jaden Hicks is one of the best players on the team. You know, does a tremendous job on both sides of the ball, whether it's at H back on offense or defensive end. He's also backed up and played linebacker a little bit. Um, just he gives teams a lot of trouble on the edge. He's so fast. His first step is so good. So, you know, he's a huge part of the team. Uh, Mikhail and Cameron has done a tremendous job. He's been our number one corner out there. If we've got a tent guy that's a little bit more prolific or is a main receiver, you'll see him following around. Uh, Mikhail is just dependable. He does a great job every day. He comes to work. Um, you know, you can count on him. But just does a really, really good job, you know, shutting guys down. Um, and then Earl. Earl's kind of our silent leader over there. Doesn't always get vocal. But is dependable. Is here every day. Works hard and makes great plays. I'm really pleased with the way he's played, coming down from that safety spot, playing an outside linebacker uh, for us. Uh, just another guy that's done, been really well for us. Special teams did good. I know Cortland Earl had a uh, they had a block punt and then he recovered a fumble in uh, end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, right there, close to halftime. Before halftime, you know, got more points on the board. Uh, you know, knew we would have a chance at blocking it. They didn't. They didn't do a really good job of kicking it when they kicked it, so there wasn't. You know, a whole lot of reason to set up a return because we thought we could get after it. Um, but, you know, back from down, they were deep in their own end zone. Defensively, they did a great job going to get the block, and we found a way to jump on the football. So, you know, Cortland get, doesn't have a whole lot of opportunities to get touchdowns. So, uh, you know, it was big for him, and we're excited for him. That DeCarrion Wade also with a block punt. Yeah. yeah. That was well, a punt. You know, and DeCarrion is a guy that, you know, I tell him he's the best 170-pound D-line we've ever had, <laughs> you know, because he, he does a good job for us. He's that guy that, you know, has worked hard, that, you know, has not been one of those primetime guys for us, you know, but but has been out behind the scenes, does a great job at scout team every day. Um, and then this year as a senior, you know, has kind of gotten to be some of that, uh, that spotlight. Um, just does a really good job, explosive off the ball. Um, you know, so when those guys like him get to have some success, it's huge for him. You saw his team celebrate with him on the sideline. Um, but, yeah, just made a play, a great play. We were actually trying to, what we call Jesse James, we, it was late in the game. You know, we weren't really trying to rush. I don't think he got the signal on that one, so he went after it. Uh, and credit to him, he got back there fast enough to get it done and made a block. So, um, really big play by Mr. Wade. You know, just uh, happy for him having that success. I know that's exciting when you've got a guy who's worked his butt off for yeah. three years, and then he's a senior and finally getting some playing time, and you well, put him in there in key game situations. Yeah, well, he made some plays. You know, Coach Sanks, who does a D-line for us, has got a lot of confidence in him. You know, he, he gets in there. He gives tr people trouble because he's so quick off the ball, you know. So has made some big plays for us this year. Like I said, uh, had a big stop uh, against Ripley, you know, uh, on third down or fourth down. Yeah. Um, so playing well for us. You'll continue to see him out there. And like I said, we're glad, glad he's playing well. 
special team wise, you know, we couldn't, you can't leave that game without Grayson and, and, uh, and our punter. Uh, you know, they're both doing a really good job. They come out there and work all the time. Um, it, it is so critical how we cover on kickoff teams. You know, I'm pinning people deep. We did that really well this past week. Grayson's able to put it in different places. Had a couple opportunities for onside kick. Mm. Uh, you know, didn't didn't get either one of those, but he does a great job there. And then we punted much better this week. Uh, D did a good job, you know, pinning them back when he when he uh, got to do it. Hopefully he doesn't get to do that very much. You know, we tell him all the time we don't like it when he's playing. Um, but he, he punted the ball well for us as well. Yeah, Grayson actually got another kick into the end zone. That's awesome to see. Yeah, you know, so you got a kid that, that's young for us, going to have him out here a long time. He's a ninth grader putting it in the end zone. Um, you know, I think that's that's all he lacks, you know, is that ability to put it deep in the end zone. Uh, we certainly think he's going to have a shot at playing some football, you know, for many, many years because he's so accurate. Uh, that leg continues to get stronger. He's going to be a really good player. Well, we'll take you to a break. And, hey, we got a big, big challenge this week in a yeah. really good Louisville team, right? Uh, you know, Louisville historically is a really good football team. We played them several times. Uh, you know, big thing is, you know, they're the ones at the top of it. Uh, you know, they're looking for somebody to knock them off where we hope for the people to do it. So got to go in there and got to get after them. I just got to play well. All right, we're going to take it to a break, and we'll be right back with you on Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. It's finally game time. The smell of the fresh cut grass, the sound of the drums as the band gets ready to perform, and of course the roar of the crowd as our hometown New Albany Bulldogs enter the field. Jody Walls and Brady Brock with Gumtree Mortgage here in New Albany remember those days and agree they were some of the best. They also want your mortgage experience to be the best as well. They pride themselves on excellent customer service and establishing a personal connection with their clients. They also have the knowledge and programs to fit your mortgage needs. So whether you're building, buying, or refinancing your current home, they want to help. Call them and set up an appointment today. Jody Walls and Brady Brock with Gumtree Mortgage. Let them help make your dreams come true. Go dogs! The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Contact local agent Pam Brown for your personal price plan today. I'd like to welcome you back to Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. Well, Coach, they say to get to the top of the mountain is a goal, right? And we, yeah. we got to climb that mountain this week. Well, you know, I think we're playing really well right now. You know, we're excited about that. Had a great year. You know, everything for a goes through Louisville. You know, we know that. Um, but we really feel like we're a really good team, as good as anybody else out there. Uh, and so no better time to prove that than to go up there to Louisville, play on their field, and just get after them, you know. Uh, you know, Ripley came in here a couple of weeks undefeated, and, you know, that was the task and that was the challenge. So it's the same thing. You know, we just got to get after them. They've got great team speed, you know, uh, from a defensive standpoint. They're very, very fast. You know, uh, we've still got we've got to match that physicality. We've got to make sure we can run right at them. We've got to do a good job on, at receiver of getting off guys. Uh, you know, they'll play a lot of man coverage. Um, offensively, again, that speed's there. Their quarterback and running back are really fast. They'll spread the ball out. They're pretty balanced in run game and throwing the ball. Um, and then special team-wise, you got to keep it away from those deep guys because they've got the speed that can take it to the house. So, um, you know, again, good football team. Coach uh, Tyrone Shorter done a tremendous job there in his career. I uh, was at Knoxville before that, so he's won a lot of football games. Um, you know, but this is New Albany's year, though. We're going to go get after him. One thing I, I know kind of I raised my eyebrows last week was Ed Wamble played him real close to the half last week yeah. and was real physical with him and all. And, you know, that's a game that we thought earlier in the year that if we could get back, we'd like to have him back. And yeah. felt yeah. like we're a lot better than they are. Well, certainly, you know, we lost to them early in the year. Uh, had too many turnovers, too many mistakes. Certainly want to do a better job uh, if we got to play them again. Um, but but they did. They, they went out there. They battled with them. Same thing. It was late in the fourth quarter. I think it was 7-17, to 17, so they were in the game. Um, you know, they didn't do it enough offensively that they needed to, you know, and again, credit Lewis because they were really, really good. Um, but we've got to find ways to move the football consistently, whether that's in the run game, pass the game, whatever it may be. Um, and just, you know, find ways to contain them defensively on our side and then offensively to hold on to the ball and move the ball. So, um, a, a big task, like I said, speed wise, they've got it on both sides of the ball, but, um, you know, just excited about the challenge. Yeah, they're the defending 4A state champs from uh, this past year. 
their last loss was uh, not, uh, on September the 16th, 2022, to Starkville. Uh, coach Tyrone Shorter, you mentioned him. He's been there. This is his fifth year to, to be there as a the head coach. Uh, this is the third meeting for the Bulldogs with uh, Louisville, and they've all been in the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. I think, you know, several years ago we had a really good team. You know, Adam Conley was on it, uh, A.I. Nugent, uh, Shamarcus, C.J. Hill. A lot of those guys that were on that team went down and just just didn't get off to a good start. You know, um, had some had some turnovers, had some special team woes that, that kind of got us behind the sticks. Um well, a really good football team just maybe maybe didn't play up to our ability. You know, that's the challenge this year is go in knowing that you can play with these guys that, you know, get through the first part of the game, get through the first quarter. Hey, we're right there with them. We know we can do it. And that flip, that switch in our heads got to just turn on and go up a notch. You know, those guys, uh, you know, all week, all year, we're telling them, guys, you're just as good as anybody else out there. We got to play. Um, and then here lately, they've done that, you know, and so – Extremely excited about the way we're playing. I think our guys are starting to, like I said, understand that. They're not worried about the what stickers on the head, mm-hmm. uh, on the helmet. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I, Louisville better be ready. I uh, show they average 150 yards rushing per game and 149 yards passing per game. So well, not really either way you can, you can stop one or the other. They both sound like they're fairly They've got some great athletes, you know, um, and the running back's going to run the ball extremely hard. The quarterback can extend plays and, and is very mobile. So if he gets outside the pocket, uh, he can run the ball. Um, at receiver, they do two things. One, they can take some shots and they can come down with the ball. Um, so they do a good job of that, you know, stretching the defense. And then underneath, they, they do some quick screens and things that they're fast enough. If they get the ball quick and get a little space, you know, they can go. So, uh, you know, defensively, it's the same stuff. You know, defensive line's got to create problems, got to control the line of scrimmage, stop the run game. Mikhail and Jeb, Shaw, uh, Logan Deaton, got to keep playing the way they're playing and contain those guys in the secondary. Yeah, I show they're averaging 38 points per game, and they're holding their opponents to 8.8 uh, 8 points per game. They've got three shutouts on the year, four games. They've had held the opponent to seven points or less. So, yeah. like I say, the defense is still pretty stingy. And their defense starts and stops at speed. You know, um, I think they're a little bit smaller than some other Louisville teams we played. I know, like I said, three years ago when we played them, they were really big up front, had a number seven. That was a great defensive lineman. Now, they've still got some really, really good players, but they don't have that size. I think, you know, on paper anyway, their 240 is the biggest guy they've got up there, 230 is the other defensive tackle. So, Two mid-sized defense guys that are athletes, and then two really fast guys on the end that are around 200 pounds. Um, that we've got to know where they're at. Their their defensive ends are stand-up guys, so they're, they're trying to create rush, trying to create pressure, um, and just playing with a lot of athleticism. They're going to play a lot of man coverage. You know, when man coverage is great, if your guys can do it, but if you can create some picks or some rub routes, or or you know, if you just win a one-on-one battle, that leads to a lot a lot of points. So. Uh, so it's going to be a good challenge for our up front offensive line to just contain those guys. Like I said, I think size-wise, we're going to be bigger than them up front. You know, we got to make sure we're creating some push and some lanes for Keelan Simpson. And then in the in the receiver, you know, we just got to do a good job making plays. We know that Braden's going to make get us some balls. And they're going to have opportunities. Um, they just got to do a good job making them. Um, physically, outside of receiver, they're going to try to push you around. You know, their DBs do a great job harassing you, staying in your face. We got to be physical there too. So our receivers got to push them back. They got to get create separation, uh, and then make plays. You mentioned quarterback. I've got number nine Hunt as a junior. Uh, he, he's thrown uh, 190 passes, and they've called 106 for 1494, 18 touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah, you know, again, a guy that can do hurt you with his legs or throw the football. Um, it is not, I wouldn't say he's as accurate as Braden is. You know, he doesn't throw the ball um, as well as he does. Now, that doesn't mean they can't make plays because they've got some great athletes out there that do um, come down with the ball and do a good job. So, um, you know, certainly balanced enough that we got to make sure we uh, defend both sides of the run game and the pass. Show several guys that touched the ball for them. It was a, a long list of what I was looking at. Uh, number eight, Jordan. Uh, as a senior running back, 118 carries for 473 yards, four touchdowns. Number one, Haynes, a junior, uh, 68 carries for 387 yards, four touchdowns. Number five, Sanders, a senior, uh, 31 carries or 31 uh, carries for 88 yards and eight touchdowns. Sounds like they put him in the goal line today. And number six, <clears throat> Hoskins, uh, uh, a junior with the 22 carries for 136 yards and three touchdowns. So yeah. several guys that they rely on. They're a team with a lot of running backs. You know, they're just a lot of athletes, a lot of guys out there that run the ball well, uh, and they just run well in general. So 
Um, you know, it's not a team that you have to go stop one or two guys. You have to be sound. You have to stop everybody. Um, you know, and when they throw the ball out there in the flats and they try to get to a receiver quick, we got to be flying down to make a tackle. When they hand it off inside and that running back's going to run really hard, uh, we've got to make sure we abuse the offensive lineman. And then the linebacker's got to fill gaps and wrap up. So I've got to be sure tacklers this week. We've done that well lately. Uh, we just we don't want to give guys second chances. Running backs and skilled guys with the speed that they have, you give them second chances, you know, they can turn into big plays. So just got to wrap up. Just got to do our job. You know, it's not a, any secret. The team that blocks the best, tackles the best, going to probably win the football game. Uh, you know, I, I think these guys, our assistant coaches, do a tremendous job coaching them. Um, our guys are coached well. They're, they're athletic. They're, they're aggressive. They're getting after it. Um, you know, like I said, it's going to be a tough task. I think they're ready for it. Yeah. Defensive-wise, uh, we've got several linebackers that are leading them in tackles this year. Got number 10, Coleman, as a junior with 95 tackles on the year. Another linebacker, number five, Sanders, a senior with 94 tackles. He had 15 in this past week against Etiwamba. You know, five's a guy that's going to stand out to you on film. When you when you watch it, you see him all over the place. They'll put him at uh, over the slot receiver. They'll put him in the box. They'll put him at safety. Um, he he's a guy that you know if, when you watch the film, he stands out. Uh, just a really good player, really athletic, really fast, sure tackler, guy that gets after. So we're gonna have to know where he's at. Uh, number ten is a guy that's primarily in the box. He's that inside linebacker for the most part. Uh, you know those deep, four defensive linemen that they play with, sometimes five, do a good job of spilling things to him, uh, taking up offensive offensive linemen so he stays free and gets to roam and make tackles. Uh, so he, he's the middle guy. we got to make sure we get to him in our protection as far as running the football uh, or blocking assignments um, and just get a hat on him because if we do that, we can block him. A couple other guys that they listed as linebackers, uh, 29 Owens, a junior with 81 tackles, number 11 McKinney. Uh, junior with 65 tackles. He had 11 tackles and four tackles for loss against Itawama this past yeah, week. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys with a lot of tackles, you know. Uh, so they've, they've played a lot of football, obviously. Um, you know, I think drives, they, they've they done a great job keeping people out of the end zone, like you said. Um, but people have been able to move the ball on some. So we've just got we've got to maintain that. We've got to get first down, stack first downs on top of each other. You know, our third down conversion percentage needs to be up there high. Um, you know, just got to do all the little things that lead to first downs and moving the football. Well, I can say I think we're up for a challenge. Uh, well, like I said, Ripley came in here undefeated, right. uh, and uh, we had him at our place. Got to go to Louisville, but uh, what a better place to go and, and bring home a victory. Well, you know, like I said, you, in 4A, it's going to go through Louisville. You know, so we know that. We've known that. You could ask us that at the start of the year. Knew that, obviously. You know, they won the state championship last year. Um, what, I, what I think has changed is this team and how it's evolved and how it's play, progressed. Um, they're just We're really playing well right now. You know, we've got a lot of confidence. Um, and like I said, I think, you know, we're going to show up and prove to Louisville and everybody else in 4A that, hey, we can play and you all need somebody to be reckoned with and, you know, just want to get after them. Yeah, I definitely think the last three or four weeks, it's like we're getting better and better every week. Our guys are stepping up and, and you know, just at the end of the day, making plays. Well, you know, we're, we're executing well. We're playing better. We're being more disciplined. Uh, and then I think the third thing that, you know, I've noticed is which we're playing physical. I mean, the guy defensively, they're flying around. They're hitting people offensively o-line wise they're pushing people out of the way they're running the ball keegan continues to run the ball effectively and hard um but man the, the physicalness of that defense right now is, is really impressive best of luck friday coach absolutely excited about it you know looking forward to being at lewisville um looking forward to what the bulldogs can do well hey this was the goal beginning of the year right that's it the, they worked hard and and look where we are well there's no sense in waiting until week three or four or five in the playoffs to play them you know right uh you know round two it is and so we're gonna get after them uh, and see where we stack up yeah well good luck this week thank you for tuning in to inside the Omni football with um coach cody stubblefield i'm paul henry and david good and and happy for our show to be brought to us by gumtree mortgage brady brock jody walls uh, and also pam brown at state farm uh, both those businesses support us like i said we appreciate them Thanks and go Bulldogs. Here at Pam Brown State Farm, we are so excited to sponsor Inside New Albany Football with Coach Cody Stubblefield. We have served New Albany for a quarter of a century and we are so proud to continue to serve this wonderful community far into the future. We look forward to a fantastic season for Coach Stubblefield and the Bulldogs. Good luck and go Bulldogs! Yeah.